Hey guys, this is Edwin here from uh, The Recording Connection. Excited once again to be hanging out with you guys. What we're going to go over is the top 10 mixing mistakes audio engineers make. And that's including me. Uh, from my experience working with Disney artists, mixing Disney artists, uh, mixing uh, uh, a group by the name of All for One, a uh, great, great group. Um, I, I did a lot of these mistakes, you know, and I learned. I learned by asking. I learned by seeing, well, why, why aren't my... Uh, why aren't my mixes sounding the way I want them to sound, the way my reference mixes sound, you know? And it starts from the very uh, small things. The very small things are going to make the difference in the long run, you know? So we're going to go over all of that as well. Any questions you guys have, feel free to ask me. Um, but at the end of this, uh, at the end of this uh, episode, I I should say um, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna answer every single question so uh, here we go number 10 is organization organization meaning uh, you know how the, the your session is laid out you know that's 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 a critical thing guys make sure that you have all your files there make sure that there's no missing uh, files dialog box whatsoever that's like the number one thing that is my pet peeve you know Make sure you, you're able to literally open a session in any any situation, any computer, and you're able to open it. So, so how do you do that? Well, uh, here, as you guys can see, you guys see the session, right? Everything is already rendered. Um, and usually I send I send sessions, re rendered sessions to, to mixers if I'm not mixing the record, uh, because that's it, that there's no more uh, edits to do, there's no more, everything is clean, we want everything to open up uh, for, the for the engineer, for the mixing engineer, I should say, to just be able to start mixing, you know? And uh, do something as, as a courtesy also, when you're sending it to your engineer, make sure that everything is organized. If if you're not mixing it if you're mixing it trust me you're gonna get a lot of disorganized sessions you're gonna sit missing dialog boxes and it's gonna get on your nerves so make sure um, you 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 prepare everything before uh, before we we'll start start to work on it so for example I see you guys could see here my screen um, everything is rendered but let's say here let's focus on this right now right let's say you know let's say these a couple of things here for example this here you know, let's say there's a bunch of things here. Let's say here. So, as you know, when producers are working, or if 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 you're a producer and you're working on this, you know, there's there's a bunch of these boxes all over, right? And just for this demonstration, I'm just gonna literally just put a bunch of things here, and all these things here, and you have boxes here, and this whole thing, right? What I like to do, guys, is literally highlight everything, right? And literally, if you if you click on Shift Enter, that'll take you out to zero, right? As you can see, out to zero. Then all you gotta press is Shift Option Three, and that'll render everything. Now, why do I want to do this? This is why I want to do this. And and you, if you have access to the producer's computer uh, before you even start mixing, do this in his computer. Why? Because Essentially, the way Pro Tools works is a lot of these files, especially with producers are creative, they just drag them in or they just, you know, just add them. Um, so the the actual Pro Tools is not reading the file from the audio files folder. It's reading it from a secondary folder. It's it's locating it through another folder. So when it gets copied to you, you're thinking you have the whole session. When you open it, there's missing files. So this way you just render it and it goes automatically into audio files uh, folder make sure you always have every single file from the session also uh, make sure that you you organize it you organize your vocals as you can see here on top uh, these are inactive um, you have the vocals here you got some some claps here some drums here uh, you got the bass um, a piano and this is a very straightforward session guys so it's not it doesn't have a lot in a lot going on that way you guys we can focus on these things instead of trying to scroll through through uh, tracks so yeah make sure that everything is organized last thing you want to do is start you know looking for files you know where where's this file where's this clap or the worst thing is working on a session right you're mixing everything and then you send it to the producer and then they're like well this sound is missing this sound is missing and you're thinking well this is what you sent me man you know so just try to try to try to control these these small fires 
from the from the beginning instead of doing it at the end uh so yeah so number one number 10 is organization make sure you're organized make sure that the session is you're able to open it in an, in any computer that being said any any plugins this is what i do with producers especially for like the disney stuff i did i did it for the all for one stuff but that was mostly a lot of live stuff but i told producers i asked the producers i was like hey make sure that any vst any sound that that you have a plug it in that is you know it's, there's a distortion in the sound it's part of the sound it's not the mix part it's just part of the sound you know let's say you know you you want it as that timbre you know producers you know as, as a lot of you guys know it your producers you add plugins and stuff make sure you print all that out Make sure you print all that out because you don't know if you as a mixer have those plugins. Make sure all that is printed out. That way there's no plugins whatsoever from the beginning. That way it's, it's easier. That way you're, you're, trust me guys, you're going to save yourself a lot of headaches trying to get go back and forth, back and forth. I don't have this plugin. I don't have this plugin. Just make sure, hey, make sure everything is rendered. Any 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 instrument in, instrumentation, any special plugins from Make sure you print them out. Usually, if, if they're you know real good producers, they already have this done. But you'd be surprised. Even some of the best producers just you know just let it go like that, and then by the time they hear the mix, it's like a totally different mix. So that's number ten. So any questions you guys have uh, in regards to that, let me know. Any shortcuts that you guys want to know to make it quicker, uh, definitely let me know as well. Color coding. Let me just go over it with you guys very quick. For example, here, you know, you guys just highlight what I do is essentially just click on this, right? And then you have tracks. Now, what I like to do, and, and I didn't do it here to show you guys, I like my clips to be the same color as the tracks as well. So, for example, on this one, uh, make sure everything is highlighted. Just for so everybody could see. And what I do, I just like to make everything uniformed. Uh, it's, uh, another thing you guys could do is go to setup and preferences. Um, you're going to have this dialog box under display here on default uh, clip color coder, uh, coding. Sorry, I bring it down to color. Just do that. Usually it'll change, like as you can, can see here, but sometimes it doesn't, depending on, on what you have, have highlighted, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's you have everything there that way you know it's easier when you're working when you're being creative you want to do these little thing guys don't start mixing without having these things down it's very important it's going to be much much easier for you in the long run so yeah any questions you guys have in regards to that let me know awesome number nine is the the chorus doesn't peak um a lot of these a lot of mixes when you get to the chorus it doesn't it doesn't get bigger you know a lot of it is dynamic range a lot of it is because we start mixing you know we just focus on the verse verse so much you know and then by the time we get to the chorus by the time we get to the to the pre-chorus to the chorus it's like we're kind of over it you know a lot of a lot, a lot of times what i like to do is sometimes start mixing in the chorus that the, the highest part of uh, the session, I like to do that as well. That way, you know, you're just coming down. You, you mix the loudest part, then you come down. Or depending on you, if you like the lowest part and then build up, you could do that as well. Nonetheless, don't make sure you don't spend too much time on the lowest parts because your ears are going to get burned. After a few hours, your ears are going to get tired. So when you, when you go to the highest part, your ears are just like, give me a break, you know? So do that. For example, and it doesn't have to be like the grandiose you know lift whatsoever you know just the little things that are gonna get they're gonna make the difference for example here let me take off the clip for you guys so what I did here as you guys could hear the way you guys are doing that As you guys can see there, what I did is I, I brought in the, the keyboards. I brought them in a little bit hotter. They came in. Um, I brought them in. That way, you know, it, it made the difference in the hook. That way you, you felt it. That way it, it grew a little bit more, you know, if, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of things that that uh, a lot of things that I like to do is also um, 
not compressed, for example, not compressed so much um, on on the on the on the verses, on the pre's, um, a lot of automation as well, which we could go over uh, it right now. Automation, uh, very very straightforward. For example, let's just open you know anything. For example, let me not open the two mix. Uh, for example, yeah, let's see this. So for automation, anything that you want to automate, guys, you just press on this uh, auto plugin automation box. Uh, very, very easy. Um, anything that you want to uh, automate, let's say the input, the output, the master bypass, um, you know, anything that you guys want to switch, you guys definitely do that. Uh, if you guys want to do multiple things, so let's say this, you add it on. And it's there perfect now what I would what I would do since we're working on this on this uh, track now what I would do is bring it down here and then here very straightforward input output whatever it is that you want to change here let me put on the grid for you guys let's say for example this right uh, here we are in the output let's do uh, attack here actually do bypass because that'll be much easier for you guys to see. Perfect, here it is. Master bypass. For example, here, bring it up, on, off, depending on where um, you guys want to switch it. Here, let me, so you guys could see this. Very easy, right? Is there? Perfect. Awesome. So just making sure you guys uh, uh, see this. Um, use a lot of automation as well. Automation is gonna help you guys. It's gonna build. Do those build. That way your your hook is you know has a good build. And uh, um, if you guys you guys um, if you guys could hear it, um, there's a there's a difference in tonality with the keyboards, and that's just the rate problem that we're having right now. But no worries about that. What I want you guys to, to know is the different things that you guys could do. So, for example, in order for the for the hook to get bigger, use a lot of automation. That'll help you guys tremendously. So that's number nine. Any questions you guys have in regards to number nine? Let me know. Awesome. Number eight is boomy or thin sounding mix. That that tends to be one of those things where it's it's a it's one of those that you'll hear it in the morning. It's not something that you'll hear it um, right away. So in the morning, the next you know whenever you guys hear a mix, whenever you guys finish a mix, what I would say is don't send it out until the next morning. Make sure you listen on, on fresh ears. Uh, in Thin, as you guys, it's very self-explanatory, right? When it's very thin, it's, you know, there's a lot of highs, not too much body. When it's too boomy, it's a lot of bass and not too much, you know, not too much, you know, highs in it. You know, the balance, right? So what I like to do here is that when it's boomy, it's usually muddy, right? So what, what we've been we've been talking about throughout these hangouts hangouts is how to differentiate these, right? Who's gonna win the, the low end battle, right? So it's the bass, the kick. When you guys when when you work on that, then from there work mold the bass on there. You know, mold the bass, work on that as well. So for example, what I would do here, very easy. I have a in the bass, I have a bass sub. And on that, um, right here, right now, I'm not using a lot because it's acoustic bass, so it sounds very, very good. Let's let's hear it right now. A lot of body. A lot of body, right? So I didn't touch it uh, too much. And here, as you guys can hear, so you guys can hear. I want to give it that acoustic feeling, you know. I want to give it that acoustic side to it. I want to, I want to be able to, 
to for it to make it feel like you're you know you're you're there you know i i recorded this uh uh a, f uh a few years ago and everything was live there was nothing overdub whatsoever everything is one take um and it sounded great i wanted i wanted the vibe to be well you're in the room with the band you're in a club with the band whatever that may be and i i think it, it sounded very good now in order to glue it every everything together uh, make sure you have a good uh two mix compressor here i just have uh you know tr uh, traditional g master uh bus compressor not too much um touch not too much it's it's not hitting the compressor too much essentially it's acting as a glue you know and don't be afraid to hit it don't be afraid to not hit the compressor too much but you know give it a good healthy um a good healthy you know mix in in there you know that way it does its thing perfect so any questions you guys have in regards to those definitely um let me know and also guys i wanted to uh, uh tell you guys about this awesome awesome uh thing that we're we're we're, we're talking about is creating great mixes and in in the program that we have in the recording connections the advanced program that focuses on that i know a lot of you guys are in the bachelor's a uh, program the advanced programs you guys really get get to dive in into the mixing aspect of it you know um so definitely let me know if you have any questions in regards to those as well Number seven. Number seven is large swings in spectral balance. Essentially what this means is having a balance, having consistency throughout the mix. Um, a, lot, a lot of times, uh, you know, especially in the beginning stages, you know, our mixes sound, you know, sound off balance, you know, it sounds very right heavy, very left heavy. And what we want to do is just glue it all together. So great, great uh, tool. Let me show you guys. Great tool to use is the C4. The C4 is a multi-band multi compressor meaning that you could really focus on the certain uh, frequencies really focus on the certain things that you want to glue in together so use this one this one's a very very good one the tube tech smc 2 bm um that one is really good any tube tech in general and um i don't have that one per se but like i'm gonna show you guys a different one that that works it's not a multi-band compressor so don't uh don't mistake it for that but um it's this one right here give me one second here where did it go this one's the cl1b uh, right obviously it's not a multi-band compressor but these in general are very very good guys um really uh folk uh, what i use these is in drums a lot i use these in, in in pianos as well so this one is very very good so that's number seven. Number six is not enough punch. Well, don't we all want that punchiness? Don't we all want that 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 you know the drums to hit hard and the vocals to hit hard as well? Um, from, from what I mentioned a few hangouts ago, is start start mixing either drums or vocals. One of those two. Uh, especially what what I've done a lot lately is start mixing with vocals. You know. Start mixing with vocals. Make sure it's sitting right, and don't touch it. Then going with the drums. What? Because what happens is you you get the drums sitting right. Even after you you you're messing with the vocals, you get the drums sitting right. And then when you listen to it, when you listen back to it, the, it's very drum heavy. So let's let's focus on not doing that. Uh, make sure that that we're carving everything out. We're carving it out uh, for uh, the vocals. Um, it, uh, a like, good thing for this is is using, for example, VCA compressors. Um, focus; uh, those will really work great with vocals. Um, that that'll help it pop out, you know. So that is uh, number six as well. And uh, something else I wanted to talk to you guys about is the Learn uh, from Legends a scholarship that we have. And this is very, very exciting. I'm gonna direct you guys to our Facebook page at the Recorded Connection for more details. You're gonna be able to work with great engineers, great mixers that are really gonna sit down with you and work on these mixes with you, you know? Um, people like Al Schmidt, you know, are in the line 
lineup. You know, you really have legends that, you know, do have a lot of credits under their belt that they know. Obviously, they know what they're doing, but they have that experience. The number, number one thing about this industry is longevity, right? Especially at the end of, at the not at the, at the end of the race, you know, it's it's, it's far far uh, in between the ones that stay with this in in this industry. So make sure um, you guys check that out. It's a free scholarship. Uh, if if it was me, I would be in Facebook right now looking at these details while you're um, listening to this hangout. So yeah, so make sure you're on the lookout uh, for that. Now, not number uh, five. Number five is no sparkle in a bottom. And what I mean by this is there's no uh in your mixes you don't there's no defined low end and there's no defined high end and how how do we do that now if you guys uh check over here in my session um what i like to do a lot uh is um um use a lot of submixes which you guys should use and that'll help you a lot to focus on the particular things for example in drums let's say right So this is straight congas, right? Add a good, nice little reverb. And the, the reason I add is just because I love the vibe of that. It's not too much, you know, but as you can tell, it's really coming up on top, you know? And I did that on purpose because these congas were for the very full body, but I want to let that uh, that bass, that acoustic bass under live, you know? And when it, you hear in the whole, the whole mix, it doesn't really make, you know, that much of a difference. Check that out. And my mentality behind this is where, well, I'm I'm sitting in, in you know in the lounge. How do I? I want to feel like I'm part of the band. I want to feel like I'm enjoying this. You know, I don't want to do too much to it. I don't want to. Um, and as as you can see, I'm not processing a lot. You know, and the number one thing uh, in this, and I actually engineered this this one. So if you guys engineer a session that you guys mix, trust me. The microphone techniques are gonna come handy in this situations, you know. Um, uh, uh, the congas in, in this, they're they're not they're MD 421s. This is a few years ago, 421s, yeah. And the snare, because I was gonna talk about the snare, it's just the SM57. Nothing special, guys, you know. And uh, and the reason I use those because one they're solid microphones and two because I know that the sound is 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 appropriate for this this actual record you know and the what I wanted to talk to you guys about is as you guys can hear I have congas the congas sound great but then the side stick comes in. Now those two can can sometimes fight each other so what i did is if you guys heard um the the snare the side stick is much a little bit uh i ducked it down a little bit um that way you know the congas could come out you know little things little things are gonna make the big difference this is before going into the loudness war this is before going into all that start start from 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 scratch guys start from basics start you know focus on that before getting you know to the end you know and uh, what I recommend is each mix be at least four to five hours of each song you know just that's you know that's how you gauge okay you know if you if you mix something that took you an hour it must have been good rough mixing you know and that's it you know but really take your time you know scope these things think you guys think of yourselves as artists you know think of yourselves as okay well how am i sculpting scoping this this sound you know how am i placing this here how am i placing this here what purpose is going to be and then with all that you guys have tools such as automation compression um a parallel compression things like that it's really not rocket science guys but it's attention to detail little details are going to make that much of a difference once again remind you guys um any questions you guys have make sure that uh you guys actually you know just type it in there's no such thing as a dumb question once again Number uh, four, washi sound and no a death. For this one, washi sound. This one, what I what I want to focus on is the 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 stereo field uh, on on mixing, right? What is the stereo field? Everybody uh, loves, you know, obviously wants to use a stereo field, but in in this situation, in mixes, 
too much stereo field is 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 not is not helpful because everything is going to be wide left wide right there's some mixers that only use wide left wide right uh right left right r wide right sorry and then center some t some people use in the middle i i usually it's either these or down the middle one of those it really it, it really doesn't i don't really touch the in-betweens uh not too much um why because you know a lot of a lot of our audience are not listening on big speakers anymore you know um a lot of our audience are, are listening to in laptop speakers and headphone speakers you know and hemp headphones sorry so um make sure that you guys for example any reverbs and i I'll show you guys right here any reverbs just turn them into mono see how that sounds so for example now that we're looking into the congas here let me see here see what's going on here All right I mean you don't even have to split it to mono even if you want to just and see how that affects you things like that are gonna make the difference I actually like that as opposed to And and I and I guys and I get the argument that well it's reverb you're adding you know ambiance you you wanted to have it as wide as possible I get it but when you have too many of those going uh, you know at once you're not gonna get the the feel of being in in a lounge listening to a band play because keep in mind you know you're you're sitting you know you're enjoying this live band play you don't have reverb all all over you you'll have reverb maybe on the monitors that are coming out or the reverb of the room and sometimes it's just coming down straight in the middle sometimes coming from the top depending on the venue sometimes just on one side things like that those are the little little tricks that are going to make make your mix that much better and they're just going to make it you know feel much more real or if that that's doesn't that make sense it's gonna give that 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 sound it's gonna it's gonna give that emphasis on the audience that they're listening okay we're listening to a live band okay so that is uh, number four number three is vocals consistently too loud or too uh, low and this one uh, just piggybacks to what we're talking about this one piggybacks on Focusing on 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 the balance of it and and multi band compression, um, that's what I would do. If sometimes it's too loud, sometimes it's too low, uh, make sure that you're focusing that. But before that, um, I'm gonna practice what I preach and I'm gonna go into automation. You know, for example, just a quick example here. Let me uh, activate this this vocal track. This is one of my favorite parts, guys. Automation, automation of vocals. Because I, I, I didn't grow up in that old school uh, uh, times. I didn't grow up in, in, in actually writing it by my, you know, writing it, writing the vocals to, to print, you know. Now everything is digital, you know. Sometimes I wish, I'm like, well, I wonder how I'd do, um, you know, mixing in this analog, just pure analog. And then I then I remember the whole uh, stories of a cutting tape, and then I kind of changed my mind. But I, I incorporate that same uh, mentality to this. So, for example, Mi gato se está quejando porque no puede vacilar. Si donde quiera que se mete, su gata lo va a buscar. So I could say, well, it sounds okay, it sounds good, good, I'm done. No, but what I would do is I'd go back and I actually ride, I ride the fader, the whole song, I ride it, ride the whole fader, and because you're riding into the compressor, don't don't let the compressor. If there's little things that you could do to make it sound much more authentic, do it. That's the word I was looking for, authentic. So what I'd do is just uh, I I would just ride it in, essentially. And let me see. I want I want you guys to see this. You guys could a sec here. Perfect. Let me bring this zero. There you go. Mi gato se está quejando porque no puede vacilar. Si donde quiera que se mete. 
su gata lo va a buscar. And uh, this is what, something that um, I, I, I use this on purpose. It obviously is in Spanish because I want you guys to hear the timbre. I want you guys to hear the different things that are going as opposed to just, you know, the song in itself. Just things like that. Um, just focus on that. That's what I would do. I took a few jobs. I took a few jobs, uh, some Asian mixing jobs. Because of that, I didn't know what the song was, was you know, what it even said. But I was like, if it, if it feels something, if if it touches me, then obviously it's going to touch them, you know? Um, something about mixing that a lot of people, um, a lot of engineers, I, I should say, oversee is, well, you're still, you're st you're, you're the seventh a member of the band that's what i call it you know um it comes down to you you know a lot of, a lot of times we feel like well we're by, by ourselves mixing nobody's paying attention it's like well i'm you know i'm just doing this, this is just labor it's like no you're actually adding the feeling you're 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 doing the final the final stage of it obviously mastering after but the mixing part is 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 where you could get creative on what to bring out what to do so essentially my vocal uh, tracks would look like this writing all over and i I took everything out that way I could do it with you guys you know and then if there's some things that you don't like you know you just come back Mi gato to se está quejando porque no puede vacilar and then you could literally anything you want to bring up anything you want to do porque things no like puede that vacilar. Right, let's, let's put some porque Porque no puede vacilar Si donde quiera que se mete Right so f here are a few a few things that stuck out a few syllables um, that just did not sound Si donde quiera que se mete That last part I, I want to bring that out so what I do just dip it up a little bit And guys, I know this could get tedious at points, but keep look, think of the the large spectrum of things. This, this is going to help uh, your compressors. This is going to help you know the end goal of what you, what we're doing here. You know. Things like that. So make sure, guys, make sure um, that one of the one of the key things for vocals to not get lost in the mix is not only start either either start mixing vocals or do drums and vocals um, before anything. But after, let's say, obviously you're not gonna ride the vocal if you have if you don't have all the in instruments in there. But let's say, you know, you have everything sounding good. Make sure you're writing that vocal throughout, you know, make sure you're using latch, make sure you're using, you know, you're using these things, these extra tools um, to make that the mix much better. You know, um, we're in the digital age. So, so, you know, programs like Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, they could do a lot for you. you could, they could be constantly writing the faders. You know what, you just draw it in and that's it. As opposed to back in analog, right? Cause you had to do it and then another pass, you had to do it again, run around, have a bunch of assistants. Just think of this, that you have virtual assistants that they're just sitting in the sidelines that you could use, you know? So keep that in mind, guys. Any questions you guys have in regards to vocals, let me know as well. Number two, which actually, once again, piggybacks on uh, number three is insufficient detail, which is great, great uh, segue, uh, leeway to, to what I was saying here. You know, detail using automation, using a bypass, all these things that you could do uh, with your plugins. Uh, use those to your advantage. Um, let's see here. Let me just see what what uh, different things I could show you guys here. Puede vacilar si donde quiera que se mete su gata lo va a buscar de noche brinca la verja que está detrás de mi casa a ver si puede fugarse 
sin que ella lo pueda ver y no tan pronto te di Number one thing that came out out of all that is the hi-hats. That, that's literally what I just heard. What I do is, well, it, it sounds good, but how could I kind of change the, the feel of it? So what I do here, little, little things, guys, are going to make that much of a difference. See here, I just switch it. I switch um, the overheads because it doesn't seem like, let me see, did we get a, no, did not. So what I try to do is just change out the overheads. So in this case, there was no uh, uh, hi-hat mic it's a while ago, so I, I don't recall how I actually mic'd it, but from my best guess, it was because the hi-hat, sometimes when you guys, uh, when, when we mic hi-hats, they, they tend to be useless sometimes, and that's okay. That's really okay. Why? Because it's picking up some snare, it's picking up too much hi-hat when you bring it in, it's just clashing, so sometimes even just the overheads work great, you know? Uh, one thing that I like to do when micing uh, overhead, especially over the hi-hat, um, what I do is instead of putting them right, uh, Vote both has a V. Just tilt this one. Tilt the 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 right one or this yeah the right overhead that is face that's closer to the symbol. Tilt it closer to the hi hat. Then what you could do is just get a cable, you know get uh, you know put one one hand in the middle of the snare and then bring it up to each microphone. Make sure they're they're e equal distant. Equal distant is that the word? Um, make sure they're equal regardless of the space. That way you don't have any facing phasing issues. And a num that number number one, the number one most common mistakes that um, engine audio engineers um, make is over compression. Over compression is 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 tends to be a very common one. It's and it's very easy to to um, do it for a few reasons. Number one, because we want more punch. You see how all these all these other points that I came in uh, that I was talking to you about. Um, um, come into this over compression uh, uh, conversation. Um, so that's number one. We want more punch, so we think, well, well let's over compress everything. No, let's not do that. Um, also, control the of of the vocal. We tend to over compress that as well because we don't want to ride the vocal. So make sure you guys uh, stay on the lookout for that. Now, what does over compression sound like? Well, I'll just do it right now. This is what over compression sound like. That's very extreme, right guys? Very extreme. What I like to do sometimes when I'm not sure, I work backwards. I get it there, and then I'm like, well, where could I fix it, right? So what I do. I work backwards and what and what to hear guys a few things excuse me if there's one thing that oh, excuse me once again if there's one thing that I want you guys to get out of this hangout is this what to listen for in compression what to listen for mixing what what is the key elements that are going to that are really going to stick out to you that, that are going to give you problems one is symbols symbols will give you problems uh, because they have a tail right they have a tail so if you get it right, it sounds beautiful. But usually, in order to get it right, um, it, there's a lot of things that come into it. You know, the snare, things that are going to affect it, you know? Number one is cymbals. Uh, number two is bass. Listen to the bass. Listen to where it's falling, as you guys could hear here when I was over really compressing it. Um, the bass was just, you could, you could literally feel it getting squashed. You could feel it getting just squashed, squashed. Um, that, listen to that. Um, listen to vocals. And the last one that I would listen to is the snare. Um, the snare um, is, is a really good, um, it's a really good, uh, 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 
what's the word I want to use? It's a really good a signal or just thing that you could hear, look out for um, in, in regards to over compression. You're going to hear, you know, because why? Because the snare has a quick transient, right? So you're going to hear that transient just get cut off. And it just gets cut off. We want we want it to get healthy. And in in regards to acoustic uh, mixes, um, another another album that I like to hear on uh, the reference. I love the Black Eyed Peas Ella Funk album. And number two is Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews, their mixes are very very strong. Um, listen to those as well. Listen to the little thing. Don't just listen to everything. When you're hearing one song that you love, listen to it about five times or ten, or six times, up to ten times. Why not? You know, and listen to little things the first time listen to where the symbols say sit the second time listen to where the symbols sit uh, uh, you know in, in comparison to the horns listen to where the symbols sit in comparison to the snare listen to where the bass uh, uh, sits in comparison to the kick things like that and even if you guys uh, um, have the album Put it in an analyzer. Put it in, and there's a bunch of analyzers that are very cool that you guys could use um, to see the spectrum, to see where the different things come in. You know, so do that. Um, any questions you guys have, let me know, and I'll be more than happy uh, to answer them.